Hey guys, I'm about to come with another fantastic chemistry video, and today we're going on about recrystallization, a fundamental purification technique in organic chemistry. We're going to take an impure solid, filled with sand and food coloring, all that kind of nasty stuff, and we're going to recrystallize it to make a beautiful, white, pure, organic compound. It's going to be epic, guys. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to teach you how to do it. We're going to do a hot filtration. We're going to do recrystallization. We're going to do a melting point. It's not hard. It's actually kind of fun. So let's get after it. Let's get it done. Okay, class, now we're going to weigh out the unknown compound for recrystallization. Again, I'm going to take, as always, I'm going to take a piece of weighing paper, fold it in half, and I'm going to place it on top of the scale, or the balance, excuse me. And then put the cover back on, and then re-zero. All right, now it's easier to use this thing with the side shields taken off. Put in some of the unknown compound. But you know, between 200 and 400 milligrams is fine. There you go. As you can see, it's blue. I'm going to try to get closer to 400. And now I can tell you this: the compound in this material is not naturally blue. It's naturally white. So this is very, very impure. Oops. The cover back on. There we go. All right, and there is our mass. Make sure you write that down in your notebook. And let's move on to the next step. Okay, class, here we are back again. We're gonna do the recrystallization of the unknown solid. First, we're gonna set up for a hot filtration. Now, here I have a, a beaker with about, you know, five or six milliliters of water in there and I have a no stem funnel. Now this funnel is going to go on top of here and I'm going to take a piece of filter paper and I'm going to fold it and put it inside that glass funnel. Now what am I doing this for? I'm doing this for what is called a hot filtration. A hot filtration. Now what's going to happen is the hot water from here will vaporize, come up here, condense against the funnel a little solvent in there to weight that down. There we go. Weight that paper down. Now, as the vapor here goes up and hits the funnel, it will heat up the funnel. So the funnel and the beaker and everything in this setup will be very hot. Now, why is that important? Because we're going to do a recrystallization. We're going to put the unknown material into this beaker here. We're going to dissolve it up in this beaker as best we can with a minimum amount of solvent. We're trying to make a super saturated solution, guys, okay? So let's take this unknown solid, place it in here. There we go. And now I'm going to take, you know, three or four mils of water. What I have is a graduated cylinder filled with 10.00 milliliters of water. So I'm just going to shoot some in here. I'm not going to worry right about the volume right now because I'll get the volume at the end, how much I use. So I'm just going to shoot three or four mils in there. That's about three, actually. And I'm going to heat it up. Now, what I'm looking for is complete dissolution of the material in this beaker. Once all this material is dissolved, I can pour it through the hot filtration. Now, I want my material, the desired material, to go through the funnel. I want it to go down into here. And I want any non-soluble material to stay up here. To do that, this must be hot. If this is not hot, everything will precipitate inside of this funnel. Why? Because the funnel is cold. It'll take all the energy out of the water that I'm using to, uh, it'll take all the energy out of the water I'm using to um, cause the material to precipitate prematurely up here. Now, I can tell you that this unknown has sand in it. So I want the sand to stay up here. I don't want the sand down here. I want the desired compound to be down here. Okay? So, I'm going to let this warm up for just another minute, and then I'll continue on with the recrystallization. Okay, now this funnel has become very hot, so now I'm going to recrystallize this. Now, I've already put some water in here, and I took it off the heat because it was going too fast, and this wasn't ready to receive the, uh, the liquid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, change the camera a little bit, so I'm going to zoom in on 
this flask here so you can kind of see what's going on. All right, guys. All right, class. Now we're going to recrystallize our blue solid. So let's pipette in some water. We're going to put in about three mils of water or so. What we're looking for is for all the organic material to dissolve when the solvent is hot. It's important that the solvent is hot when it dissolves. If it's not hot, then it may not crystallize when we cool it down because we want to make a super saturated solution when the solvent is hot. And we want to cool the solvent down and have our material be insoluble and precipitate back out. So it's important as when you're choosing your crystallization solvent to choose a solvent that dissolves your desired product at near boiling temperatures and at cold temperatures or room temperature doesn't dissolve your desired product at all. Okay. So as you can see, as we heat it up, it's getting more and more dissolved. It's adding a little more. It's starting to boil now. See, we have to add more water now. You don't want it to boil. It's getting a little too crazy here, guys. Got to take it off the heat a little bit. That's okay. That's normal. That happens. There we go. Now we're getting there. We're getting there. Now we're getting there. Now you could use a clamp to do this. I've been doing crystallizations for a long time. So I don't really need a clamp. I, I know how to not burn my fingers here. But you might want to use a clamp. Now, this is completely dissolved, believe it or not. There's a little bit of sand in there, though, because we added sand to kind of mess with you a little bit. So let's put it through the hot filtration here in a moment. All right, I want to readjust the camera so you can see the hot filtration. And then I'm going to pour the hot recrystallization through the funnel. Okay, so now I'm going to reheat this a little bit to kind of precipitate it on me. That's okay. I'll just reheat the solvent. So what happened was the solvent cooled down and my desired material precipitated prematurely. That's okay. Just warm it back up because I really want you to see it go through the funnel. I'm going to pour it directly from here into the funnel. Oops, that's a little hot. And we're going to uh, catch the sand in the funnel up here. Let's turn this over this way. All right, it's getting there, it's getting there. Get a little warm back up. Just takes a minute. Almost, almost got it, guys. Almost got it redissolved. Good. That's all redissolved. Now one foul pour right down through the funnel. I'll just let that sit, and it should come right through the funnel. It's taking it a moment. It'll get there, I promise. Now we'll probably lose a little bit in the funnel. We usually do lose a, a little bit through the funnel, but not too bad, really. And we'll just let that filter. All right, guys, and I will see you in the next step, which is to basically let it cool and uh, get your crystals back. See you then. All right, guys, we've let the beaker sit for a few minutes to cool down. It's still really hot, to be honest with you. But as you can see, we're starting to get uh, white crystals back out from solution. Okay? So again, you want the solvent, which in this case was water, to dissolve your desired product at hot temperatures, but to, to not dissolve the desired product at low temperatures. Now, as it's cooling down, we're getting more and more white precipitate, which is the purified organic compound. Now, I want you to think, why does dissolving the compound up in a solvent and then letting it crystallize back out, how does that purify the solid? In other words, where do the impurities go? So where are the impurities in this, in this purification technique? We know that the desired product is the crystals. Where are the impurities? Okay, we'll see you in a few minutes after this cools down some more, and we'll do a vacuum filtration. See you then. Okay, class, now we're going to filter our recrystallization. We plug the vacuum pump in to our flask. A little bit of cold solvent, which in this reaction I use water. And we 
or this recrystallization, excuse me. I use water. Vacuum pop, everything looks good. The filter is nice and snug against the uh, filter paper, uh, sorry, the Hirsch funnel. Now, here in my hand, I have a device called a rubber policeman. I'm going to use that to scrape out the crystals from the beaker. They work really well for this kind of application. I have ice cold water here to help me rinse out the beaker in, uh, in the end to get every last uh, crystal I can. And then we're going to let it sit for a week and dry, and then we're going to melt it. Okay, so let's do the filtering right now. Put a couple of swirls, pour it right onto there. Grab a replace, man. It's kind of like a spatula, basically. And essentially a spatula you can use in your kitchen. Okay, let's get a little cold salt in there. Get some more of our desired product. Again, you might want to think about why I use cold solvent and not warm salt. pretty much got it. So there you go. There's our filtration. Now we're going to let this sit for a week and then we'll get a mass and then we'll melt it. Okay? See you guys in a week. Alright class, now that we've filtered our uh, purified solid and we've weighed it. Now we're going to do a melting point on it. To do that we need a melting point apparatus, a melting point tube, our sample, and a hollow glass tubing. So let's take a, out of here we're going to take one melting point tube. All we need is one. It's closed at one end, open at the other. Sample goes into the opened end of course. Take our sample and we stab it with the capillary tube. And I don't know if you can see that on the camera. There's very little bit here. You don't need very much. Uh, how it was described to me when I first started was you basically want a, a thumbnail's width, so the width of your fingernail, which is not even a, a few millimeters really, of material on top. Now, we have to get this material on top of this tube down to the bottom. And that's what the glass rod is for. Stand it up straight. Drop the capillary tube, melting point tube, closed and down, and let it fall. And as you can see, it bounces up and down. And that bouncing motion actually takes the material that was once at the top of the tube and puts it to the bottom. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's right there at the bottom. Now, the next thing you need, melting point apparatus. Let me adjust this slightly, guys. There we go. And that goes right into the top here. And you look through the uh, viewfinder here, and you can watch your sample. In the next clip, you're going to see me doing my best attempt to show you on camera the sample melting. And I'll read the temperatures out to you during the video. So you can just write those temperatures down. Now remember, a pure sample will melt with a very tight melting range. Say, if your melting point of your material, say, is 150 degrees, your sample may melt at like 149.5 to 149.8. That will be a good melting point range. If it's impure, it will melt with a very broad range. It'll be depressed in this melting point, which means this melting point will be a lot lower, and the range will be a lot broader. So say, for example, instead of 149.5, you might have started melting at 120.2, and you might have finished melting at 150.8, something like that. You may have had a very broad range. So a purified sample, a pure sample, will melt with a very tight melting range. Now the first temperature you're going to want to read is when you first see liquid formation. And the last temperature you want to read is when you see the last little bit of solvent melt, solid excuse me, melting. That's how you get your range. The first temperature is where you first start seeing liquid. The last temperature is when you stop seeing liquid, or stop seeing solid, excuse me, and only see liquid. Okay? So without any further ado, let's fire this bad boy up and get its melting.